This video is intended to show how students complete the OASIS requirement checklist, typically used in the clerkships. It will focus on doing so from your laptop. There is a separate video that covers the completion of requirement checklist on mobile devices. I'll spend most of the time with two different checklists. One that functions as a simple locking mechanism and a second that requires sign-off from attending or resident physicians. I'm currently logged into OASIS using a demo student account. Within the announcements portlet, up in the top left hand corner, you should see a hyperlink for requirement checklists. This link is activated when a course that you're enrolled in has been configured with requirement checklists. This demo account has been assigned to the OBGYN clerkship. So we see checklists for constructive feedback, a duty hour log, patient counters, clinical skills, and student directed learning items. The red circle icon indicates that the requirement is not complete. Let's look at the duty hour log. As this simple checklist has been standardized across the, uh, the clerkships. This checklist closes for data entry on April 2nd and I have completed five entries. You can use the show hide link on the right hand side of the screen to dig into the details. Alternatively, you can simply click on the, the header for the checklist to open up the items and drill in to the details. The duty hour log is a simple mechanism to log weekly duty hour violations requiring one entry per week. I don't have any week six entries yet, so I'm going to use the add entry link to uh, add an item. Asterisks are used to denote mandatory items. For a date entry, you'll see a, a mixtures of controls, um, calendar drop downs, drop down list boxes, radio buttons, and even free text entries. Once you've completed the form, you just submit it. And now the entry item has been updated with a green check mark to indicate that it has been submitted. There are links on each individual item to print, edit, and delete, so avail yourself of those as necessary. You're going to see duty hour logs in most of your clerkships, and the logging mechanism that it uses is commonly used in other requirement checklist items like student directed learning. Let's take a look at a different checklist that requires sign off from the attending or resident physician. The OBGYN patient encounters is a, a good example of one. This list has a dozen or so items for entry ranging from breast health to vaginal disorders and each requires a single entry. Your clerkship director will give you guidance perhaps your clerkship coordinator during an orientation session will give you guidance on the entry of the, the requirement checklist items but generally speaking you should enter the encounter the same day as the experience versus saving all of the data entry for the last day of your clerkship. This checklist closes for data entry on March 12th and I have made four entries thus far. Note the red text on the items to signify that a faculty must sign off on the item. The green check mark next to breast health indicates that it's the only one of the four that I've completed signed off and ready to go. I previously logged an entry for cervical dysplasia but I did not submit it for sign off so let's take a look at it. As I edit the entry you can see that this data entry form is similar to the earlier form for duty hours log with slightly different data points being captured. The name of signer field is one that we commonly see on checklists that require sign off. It is a simple text box. There is text box. There is no data validation on input, but it is going to prove useful, particularly to a clerkship coordinator, to resolve sign off issues. So please do your best to spell or type the name of the attending or resident who should be observing and signing off on the requirement.
for you. Let's move on to the sign-off process as it can be a little confusing. Ideally, you would take your laptop, turn it around and hand it off to your observer so that they could you know, select sign off versus denied, perhaps type in some notes, type in their OASIS user ID and their OASIS password, and then use the submit button to complete the sign off process. Unfortunately, this type of electronic signature process is not always practical uh, when you're working in a busy outpatient clinic or ER or operating room. So I'm going to show you a common workaround that we use to use this exact same sign-off form to submit the request to the observer in a way that they can sign off on it at a later time. When employing the workaround, you may feel like you're impersonating the physician, but rest assured you're not. We have added programming code behind this form to direct the sign-off request to the observer based on their OASIS user ID alone. So you do click on the sign off button. If you want to type in the denotes, feel free to. The observer will see the notes during their sign off process. You will need the OASIS username of your observer. It's typically their UVA computing ID, but feel free to confirm that with them. We're going to submit this entry with a valid OASIS username, but a blank password as indicated in the label next to the, the password field. Let's not worry about the corresponding note on the username field as we're going to come back to that in a few minutes. The bolded text at the bottom of the form below username and password is intended to be a reminder to you of what is going to happen next. When we submit the sign-off request, the system is going to respond with an error message that says the entry has been saved, that there is a problem with a username and password, and that you'll get an email to confirm the entry. What the message does not say very clearly is, is that if the username provided is a valid OASIS username, that the system will send the email to the observer's email address with a link to sign off on the request. So this system generated message is expected and you can click OK. We return to the item now and we see that cervical dysplasia item is awaiting sign off. Offline I have logged into the system using the observer's credentials and approved the cervical dysplasia item so that it now shows up as complete. In the production system, this will typically take 24 hours or more as the system's emails to faculty are sent in daily batches. Once the faculty member signs off, OASIS will send the student an email to confirm that the checklist item has been signed off. Here's an example of such an email this case, cervical dysplasia by Mark Moody. So what about when you do not know the OASIS username of your observer? Let's look at the common problems in obstetrics item to show you how to handle that situation. We'll use the same form as before, initiate it with a click on the sign off box. But for the username, I'm going to type in a bogus email address. We'll continue with a blank password. On the username, you could have used your own email address. It doesn't matter, it won't change the behavior of the system. The bolded text again to remind us what's going to happen when we submit it. Our familiar system generated message about an error with the username and password. 
But what's missing from this message is, is that since the OASIS system cannot associate this request with an OASIS user name, Dr. Oz at Virginia, it's going to send you, the student, an email. So we can confidently click on the OK for the system generated message. Here is the email that OASIS sends to the student, confirming that the requirement checklist item was posted for an undetermined user. In addition to this email to the student, OASIS will also generate an email message to the designated clerkship coordinator saying that you submitted a requirement checklist item with an invalid OASIS username. So there's two ways that we can resolve this or get this requirement checklist item signed off. Remember the name of signer field? If the coordinator can determine who the observer should be from what you type, then they will fix it by associating the item with the right observer. If they cannot figure it out, they'll likely email you. So option number one in this situation is to leave it for the clerkship coordinator to fix it. Give them a couple of days to, to resolve it and you should be able to get the item signed off. Option number two for resolving this is to fix it yourself. Perhaps the name of signer field is not specific enough for the clerkship coordinator to determine who the observer is, or perhaps you don't have time to wait for, for them to resolve it. To fix it yourself, you can go to your homepage. The announcements portlet now has a new link about the failed sign off item. Quick list of the items that failed entry. You can select it, choose the associate entries button, and you get a simple find user or search feature where you can search for the observers in the system, choose the right one, and associate the requirement checklist item with the observer. Now the system knows who to route the request to for sign off. As we return to the requirement checklist item, patient counters will see that common obstetrics item is awaiting sign off. So that's a look at the common requirement checklist that you're going to see during your clerkship year. To summarize, we looked at simple logging of entries in the duty hour log. We spent quite a bit more time looking at the checklist that required sign off, highlighting how to handle situations where you do and do not know the OASIS username of your observer. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact us at mededweb at virginia.edu. Alternatively, you could find one of us in our respective offices in the Learning Studio, the Auditorium, or the Health Sciences Library.